Cookie, cookie. Anybody that says that my <laughs> cows are bony, <laughs> okay, take a look at cookie butter, okay? Yeah, she's been to Trader Joe's and she has been indulging a little bit extra on the cookie butter at midnight. Honey, look at her. Look at those TTs down there too. We gotta get this girl bread because even though she does, woo, the wind. Oh my goodness, even though she does have, she is a quarter um, meat cow, beef. Um, she's actually three quarter dairy. And so I'm still gonna try to breed her and hopefully milk her. She's a little bit aloof. She doesn't have uh, the personality. Look here, look over, God love its heart. Look at Daffodil. Look at this dairy cow. That's why she looks like this, guys. These animals are fed and given endless grass and hay all day. They are given grain. This is her nature. This is the nature. Well, the flies too. Oh, hi, honey. Woo! Okay. So, good morning, guys. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. It's a little bit windy this morning. I know you're hearing that. I may have to go sit in the car for a second to film this, but come here. Give me a hug. You need a hug? I need a hug. See? Isn't that better? Hey, I'm gonna run in just a minute, okay? You look busy this morning, Fritz. What you doing? So, good morning. The plan was not to film in the car. I was gonna walk around some more and uh, show you the goats. Some of my girls are getting so big. <laughs> I'm gonna be in so much trouble. <laughs> We're gonna have a hundred goat kids by Thanksgiving, y'all. <laughs> it's not funny. It is what it is, many blessings. I'm not gonna predict anybody in particular or anything like that because you know how that goes, right? You're right, I know, so. But they're getting a little bit, uh, they're more, a couple of them are a little bit more than uh, healthy already. So we're gonna go with that. But I came to, the, it's so windy this morning <clears throat> we're in this beautiful cool down. We are below average on August temperatures here in East Tennessee. I know you people in Texas, I'm not trying to rub it into your face. I'm just telling everybody this whole thing about the sun being your enemy all over the earth is not, we're enjoying life at the moment. So we've gotten a lot of rain and uh, we're getting a lot of wind right now. And uh, so I wanted to talk to you today. Today's a big moment for our family. And I wanna let you know that you'll get here. So if you're not homeschooling your kids yet, why not? <laughs> I know, I'm like this, but I hope you are continuing to try to. You've got to get them out of those schools, y'all. Guys, mamas, you're the one that carried these babies. You're the one that pushed out these babies. They are your babies. And no one is going to do a better job loving them, taking care of them, and educating them than you. Proof is in the pudding that it can be done because my last homeschool baby, unless something happens in the future, you never know. <laughs> uh, but uh, my last baby, my last homeschool baby starts college today. Started college. You know, we've talked very, uh, we've talked about different trade schools and opportunities and different things like that. And he's indecisive. So he has decided to uh, at least for a bit go to college maybe and get his associates and we're going to go from there y'all so let's let's congratulations to gabriel he is starting college uh today you know my oldest son is going to be getting married in a couple of months my middle son is in college and is on the dean's list for the third semester in a row and now gabriel is entering into the gates right now of college and uh, we're very proud of him. Now, I know, I'm just gonna go ahead and say this because I know where this is gonna go. I'm gonna have a couple of you. Well, make sure he's not indoctrinated. I get you. I, I think I know more about this than just about anybody out there uh, or, or I'm right on your level and you don't know it yet, but here's the deal. 
Um, you know, unfortunately, kids grow up and kids become adults and we have to support them um, as their parents the best way that we possibly can. And, you know, just like I had a lady, I talked about this on a video, I don't know, maybe it was a year ago, and she was railing me about, because I'd mentioned my other boy being on the dean's list, I think, and she, she was putting us down because we our kids have been to college or are going to college. And I said, well, how do you think you're gonna get any new doctors, new nurses? Important people out there beyond, I mean, there's trade school and that's, hey, if Gabriel comes to me tomorrow and says, I want to be an electrician, I want to be a plumber, I'm going to give him three thumbs up, okay? Because I think there's an incredible amount of opportunity there uh, right now, especially. I mean, I've, as I've told my kids, I'm like, you, you'll have to work for it. But if you want to be successful, I'm telling you, the opportunity is there because we've all seen over the last two to three years. So many people leave a lot of the trades due to various reasons, leave the workforce in general. They're lying to you about unemployment. They're lying to you so many lies. I mean, if we really knew the unemployment numbers, I've heard people say that it could be 20 to 30%. I mean, you know, we, we're just being lied to. And that's what I'm saying. It's to keep your confidence. Let me get a sip here. A well water. It's to keep your confidence in what's going on. And most importantly, because um, it's an election year coming up. So there's that. Okay. Ooh, uh, uh. But here's the thing. I'm very proud of my sons. And I want to encourage you moms out there to let you know you can do this. I understand that it is uh, intimidating if you've never done it. I was there. I can tell you that you will probably have people. I don't think you're going to have as many naysayers as probably we did 15, 20 years ago. No, uh, mo there's uh, such a huge homeschool movement and there's so many people that want to homeschool their kids and they say they can't. And I understand there are some that just are absolutely single parents working two jobs. I get you, but do everything in your power to try to. Okay. If you can flip your schedule, if you can bring them home, bring them home. There are so many opportunities with so many different curriculums. There are so many opportunities with co-ops. There's, I mean, guys, I mean, I've talked about this for years and years and years and you can do it. And it's the most rewarding thing. It is the most, it's next to actually birthing the baby, carrying the baby for, you know, over nine months and then giving birth and raising the baby, which only women can do, real women can do. Um, deciding to, I'm not going to go back to work or I'm going to stay home. And it's not just keeping the house and baking the casserole and doing the laundry. <clears throat> you are educating little beings for many, many years, and it is a great sacrifice. So, but it can, it's, it, it can be done. I'm proof in the pudding. And I didn't, we didn't have the support from anybody outside of ourselves, James, me and my, me and my husband. We did not have individuals that came and helped us. We didn't have individuals that came and tutored our kids, tutored our kids. Uh, we didn't, we, but we together did it as a family unit and they've scored great on the ACTs. They've, they've gone to school. They've got jobs. Like I said, uh, on the other day, my oldest boy is, you know, working and getting married. My middle one is on the Dean's list and my youngest is now starting. And I think I'm very confident that he's going to do very well. And he's very excited. You know, it comes, like I've said before, unfortunately, I think this one of the scariest moments in a mom's life is the moment that you, it's not just about them being, about you becoming sort of an empty nester. It, it's not about that. I mean, that's sort of sad in a sense. It's, it's, it's joyful and sad, but at the same time, it's the, you're always going to be concerned about them heading out into the real world. If I had one regret, it has nothing to do with school. This, th this advice goes to you if you have children, whether they are public schooled or homeschooled. Uh, I wouldn't get them a phone. If you got them a phone, get them like one of those prepaid or track phones where you can call and you can text where, you know, and that you are controlling their access to the internet. That's your job as a parent. You're not hurting your kids, you're protecting them. And our children have needed more protection than even we realized, over the, especially over the last 10 to 20 years. And even now, the world is not what it was 10 to 20 years ago. Amen? Amen. This is not the world that we grew up in. This is not the country that we grew up in. It's not. So you have to step in even harder and understand you are not your child's friend or buddy. You are their mama. And even if they say, I don't want to be homeschooled, tough. 
this is this is part of it. I'm sorry to tell you, but this is part of the problem that we have now in society is we have somehow the 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 and this part of the agenda is to make you feel like they're not your children and that you shouldn't have say so over their life, their life and their being. No, you are. And even till they are all through their adulthood until the day you're gone, you still to you still are that person to that point. You know, I was listening to some gospel music um, yesterday. And even last week, and this has popped in my brain twice, I can remember getting into the truck with my papa, going places. You know, when I was a kid, maybe preteen, young kid, typical, and he would listen to gospel music. Well, you know, I wanted to flip the channel and listen to some rock, you know, Bon Jovi, <laughs> you know, living on a prayer, you know. Uh, and even with that, I was like, we can listen to the country, and he was like, no. I'm your papa. This is my truck. I'm taking you places and I play gospel and that's what you're going to listen to. I never said another word. Thank God he did that. No, no, he didn't argue about it. He didn't bash me. He didn't bash Bon Jovi. He, and he didn't even look at me. He just looked at the radio and chewed his backer and said, no, this is my truck. I'm your papa. And uh, I listen to gospel, and that's what plays in this vehicle. See how that goes? I think I turned out okay. Maybe some of y'all don't like me, but it is what it is. <laughs> so I just want to encourage you to remind you that you are the parent. You make the decisions for their education, especially at this point. If they're, if they're 6, if they're 10, if they're 15, you are in control. And you are the one that is shaping them. Don't allow some other people somewhere <clears throat> shape them. You shape them. Don't let the phone shape them. You shape them. They won't be perfect. They won't be perfect. Some days they're going to get on your nerves a little bit more than others. But that's part of it. And one day you'll be standing at this day just like me. And don't get me wrong. I'm still very involved in all my boys' lives and you know, all, all these things. I'm just saying, this is a pivotal moment and you will get there regardless of what anybody tries to tell you, regardless of what the devil on your shoulder is trying to tell you. It's all lies and it's all deception to make you think that you can't do it, to make, your, make you feel like your kid's too stupid to be homeschooled, to make you feel like you're too stupid to educate them. Baloney. Believe me, you could spend half the time, if you were consistent with even spending half the time, that is the time. Notice what I said there? time if you just spent half the time that they are getting supposedly in the public school system i'm telling you right now they're going to come out a whole lot a whole lot better proofs in the pudding so i just want to thank you for your support i want to encourage you homeschooling moms out there right now keep going i know we're at the beginning of a new school year if you're on the fence about this don't be i didn't have a cheerleader i i went with my gut we went with our gut. Took us a year or two. We talked about it. We kind of floated through with it. We thought about pulling one boy because he needed he needed to come home from the public school system a little bit more than the others in terms of his being able to deal with being in public school. He was doing good, but you know what I'm saying? And my husband said, nope, if we're going to pull one, we're going to pull all three. And we did. Best decision we've ever made as parents. Was it perfect? No. Are they perfect? No. Did we make a mistake? probably here or there you're going to but they're your kids remember this they are your children they are your responsibility and no matter how hard it may be on some days mom and the laundry's piled up and the dishes aren't washed and you know you, you just want to sit there for a few minutes and have silence and it's not <laughs> si have silence you know you see, I don't know if that broke up or not my phone's getting low on power I better plug you in but uh, you can do it. You can absolutely do it. Well, listen, I'm going to break. My phone is low. I've got to get my run in. we got to finish the animals. And uh, i got to cheer Gabriel on. And I appreciate you. Thank you so much for being so good to my family. My Nana, she loved all her cards. You know, I put a short up. We went down there and sent that. Gave her all of her items, over 500 cards. I didn't film her because she would, she'd whoop my butt because <laughs> she was in her robe and had her two little rollers in her hair. <laughs> and she was like, don't film me. <laughs> She's getting up and about. She has ended her therapy. She went back to church on Sunday. It's been a really good week.
really positive week and the weather's beautiful and there's so many blessings. Look around, they're here, even in this wretched world that we are in. And most importantly, I wanna rem remind you and remind myself that we are here for a reason. Oh, the military's doing drills right over us. Just smile at it, y'all. God has a plan. God has a plan for your children in this world. And we have to trust that. God love you. And uh, we will see you on the next video. Thanks so much. Like, subscribe, and share. Hang in there. Hang in there. Hang in there. Stay busy. Keep pressing forth, warriors. We need you. Godspeed.